His light, his truth just flowing without seams, without bumps, without hiccups, uncensored, unafraid, and unstoppable. It is the 14th day of April 2022. Welcome to the Stu Peters Show. My name is Stu. The Society of Jesus is a military order of priests. It was founded nearly 500 years ago for the purpose of trying to suppress the Protestant Reformation. In its 480 years of history, the Jesuit order has been banned in or kicked out of dozens of countries. In England, under Queen Elizabeth, Jesuits who snuck into the country were executed. Maybe that's not so surprising. England was Protestant and didn't really want any Catholic priests in the country, but it gets stranger. In 1759, the Jesuits were expelled from Portugal and all of its colonies. In 1764, the Jesuits were banned in France. Three years later, Spain expelled them. Malta kicked them out. So did Poland. Even Naples and Parma, two countries in modern-day Italy, expelled them. Now, here's the remarkable part. All of those countries that I just listed were Catholic. The Jesuits are a Catholic religious order that serves the Pope. But wait, in 1773, even the Pope issued an order to dissolve the Jesuits. So what gives? Well, what gives is that the Jesuits historically were power hungry, almost like no other religious group in history. They became famous for gaining power in a country and then slowly subverting it for their own ends. In Spain, the Jesuits were so powerful that when the king decided he wanted to expel them, he had to plan it in the strictest secrecy. Top secret sealed orders were sent all across the Spanish Empire telling governors and viceroys to surround the Jesuits, take them by surprise, and immediately remove them from the country. And if they let even a single Jesuit escape, they were threatened with immediate execution. Again, this is in a Catholic country. So, as described, Jesuits were the globalists of their day. They served their own agenda wherever they were in the world rather than the countries that they lived in. Jesuits were famous for using clever arguments and slick reasoning to give a pass to even the most immoral behavior. They became famous for it. The tactic was actually called Jesuitism. Blaise Pascal, a famous mathematician, wrote an entire essay attacking the Jesuits for this behavior. And they're still at it today, by the way. James Martin is a Jesuit priest. He's famous for distorting Christ's message to promote the LGBT agenda and BLM while giving a pass to supporters of abortion. David Jose knows an awful lot about the Jesuits, and he says that they could even be connected to Dr. Artis's theory in Watch the Water, and he joins us now. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir. So connected to Watch the Water, the Jesuits. Make some sense of this for me. Yes, sir. So the first thing you have to do is ask the question, the question, will a government actually harm its own citizens? Will it poison its own citizens? And what you will find is that the Jesuits have had a huge uh, impact on history by doing those very things. So I'll give you an example. One of our great forefathers, Abraham Lincoln, was a self-trained, self-taught lawyer. And Abraham Lincoln took a case of a gentleman named Charles Chinaquai, who wrote the book, I believe it was called 50 Years in the Church of Rome. Uh, the Catholic Church was upset because Charles Chinaquai was releasing secrets of what was going on in the Vatican. So uh, the Jesuits created a plan to purposely uh, get him prosecuted over raping a woman, but it was a made up plan. So Mr. Abraham Lincoln, acting as his lawyer, helped him to deal with the situation, which caused the Jesuits to get upset. So ever since then, the Jesuits uh, wanted to kill Abraham Lincoln, and there's actually records of this. So uh, Mr. Booth, who killed Abraham Lincoln, was a Jesuit. And so he was plotting out the thing the whole time, and Abraham Lincoln was surprised about how many attempts happened on his life because of the plans of the Jesuits. You fast forward a little bit, you hear one of the most brilliant men and educated men in the world when it comes to what's going in the political realm, JFK, uh, one of the nation's favorite presidents. You hear JFK in a speech say that there is a monolithic conspiracy to enslave every man, woman, and child. It tells how they work by covet means and how they use guerrillas by night rather than armies by day. He tells how there is no secret headlined or revealed. So he understands that they take over the press. And then he explains that in or they will offer you security in order to take your rights. 
So they create a system of fear in order to pull your rights from you slowly, and they infiltrate all of your colleges, um, all of your 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 spheres of of major influence, government official offices, um, every field of work that would make a difference. They try to infiltrate. When you say they, you're speaking specifically of the Jesuit order. Yes, sir. Since but what you're saying is historically. All of these things that you're saying are exactly what's happening in modern times, as I just previously alluded to, as what the globalists are doing, CCP infiltration uh, and beyond. Well, sir, if you if you look up the CCP and just type into any browser, CCP and the Jesuits, you'll find that the CCP was getting ready to be completely dissolved and fall apart. It was running out of money and influence and power, and the Jesuits brought them back. So the Jesuits funded CCP. Uh, one of your guests, uh, Mark Meadows, who made the, uh, ha- was in the Humpty Dumpty Foundation. Yeah, the ridiculously named Humpty Dumpty Institute connected to the Taiha Institute, uh, closely tied to PLA officials and overseen and operated by the CCP directly. I mean, what were these Chinese communists doing with the president's chief of staff? Well, sir, you got to realize Humpty Dumpty uh, is used by the Jesuits um, as something they teach children to make fun of the fall of the king and how he won't be able to be put back together or rise again. So if you look at the Jesuits, they have what's called a a gentleman named Guy Fawkes. And if you look at the movie V for Vendetta, they have people going around the country wearing this mask they call an Anon mask. That mask is the mask of Guy Fawkes. Guy Fawkes is the gentleman who tried to kill King James and the gunpowder plot. He was a Jesuit. Every year in England today, they actually celebrate by burning the effigy of Guy Fawkes in a tree who tried to kill King James. King James came out with the Bible in English, which was never supposed to happen. And when he did that, he would not use the Vatican-approved Egyptian manuscripts, Sinaiticus, Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, and Septuagint. When he failed to do that, he angered Vatican, so the Jesuits wanted to kill him. So they literally tried to blow him up with 36 barrels of gunpowder and the whole parliament at the same time saying they were liberating the people. So when you look at the movie V for Vendetta, they tell you that it's all about liberation. They don't tell you that the one they were trying to liberate you from was God. So this is how these people really work. Now, to connect it even closer to to the movie, to the documentary, if you understand um, in the uh, school, University of Arizona in Tucson, they have a Jesuit connection and they have a telescope there. The telescope is named Lucifer, literally, Lucifer. Now, there is an article uh, that came out that is called Like Venom Coursing Through Like Venom curse, uh, Coursing Through the Body, I believe it is. And yeah, it is came talking out of about- Arizona. Yes, and it's talking about COVID-19. Well, the guy who created that article's name is Floyd, they call him Ski Chilton. Now, that gentleman actually who created that article, you would be shocked to find that in 2016, he also did another literary work in a journal of psychology. And in that magazine, he actually is looking to find out what happens to your brain during an election year. So he's looking at fear-based politics. Now, COVID was a fear-based trigger to cause people to change what they would do with elections around the country. Right. So a gentleman who was studying COVID and saying that it's like snakes, is uh, is like the venom of snakes running through your body, the damages, also is doing research to find out how the human brain works by uh, coming in contact with fear-based politics during an election year. Why I mean, I understand, that... I understand where you're going, but that seems like it could be explained away. It seems like a far stretch. So hone this in for me. Well, is the reason it's not a far stretch is because the person who is over the actual program or, or what the nation is going to do when it comes to... Um, COVID and, 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 and losing our liberties is a Jesuit. Fauci is a Jesuit. So when you look at 
all the other players involved. You look at the biggest cities that's locking people down or punishing people, closing businesses, and they will not respond to the people. Governor Ducey, Jesuit. Kumo, Jesuit. Even Jerry Brown, who would force parents to get vaccines and do all these things in California that the parents didn't want, and the legislature, uh, working with the legislature to push statutes to force them to do things when it came to their private health, Jerry Brown, Jesuit. So when you understand that the Jesuits never wanted people to have freedom, if you look at the book, uh, this is a book by, uh, it's called A Voice in the Wilderness, and it is by a man named Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano. Vigano actually explains in, in letters to Trump that they were, that the deep church, as he calls it, which he's connected to the Jesuits, he knows what they do. He's in the Vatican. He tells that they're trying to remove the freedom of the people in America and that fundamental rights is something that they never wanted. So Biden, who is also trying to lock down the nation and tell the people that they must get shots, they must stay at home, they must do these certain things, he is also a Jesuit. So you have a Jesuit trained president, right? You have a Jesuit trained uh, system, like the whole system is people Jesuit trained. I'll go back. Uh, Bill Clinton created a law that uh, he signed a law that allowed for people to have their children taken. Most people who are concerned about COVID, they're worried about getting arrested for something and then their children being taken or them not getting their children a shot and their children being taken. Jesuit Bill Clinton, Georgetown University, came forward with signing the law to allow people's kids to be taken unlawfully. And then when you move forward, the governors in the different states who are Jesuit take the most kids and remove the people's rights uh, with the highest number of, of, of occurrences. If you look in New Jersey, Jesuit connected. Kumo, New York, Jesuit connected. So what's happening is across the nation, these cities that we're seeing doing crazy things is Jesuit connected. And then if you watch, if you look at what happened with your, your video, you started to explain things that could not be explained away, you and the gentleman artist that was on there. Um, you guys started to talk about snake trials. And then you see things changing in the nation where people who said they were here to fight against COVID started attacking. So I started looking and I seen a gentleman named Urso who was a doctor who seems to deal with plastic surgery type issues yeah. and, and, and vision. Yep. The gentleman came out within hours. I mean, like the, the next day. And he said, oh, this is a hoax. Don't look at it. You know, he called me a he snake oil be... salesman and said, don't watch the water. Now, biblically, we are told that you don't answer a thing until you've heard the matter. It is folly to do that. So how in less than 24 hours, does he understand every single thing? Check out all the scholarly journal articles you guys put out, all the information in order to negate what you said. But then I looked at his history and I found out he was from Villanova, a Jesuit connected school. And I said, whoa. And then I, 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 I looked around and I started seeing that even people in the alternative media um, would act a little strange. And I started looking at some of the big names in alternative media, and I started to find more Jesuit connections. Who are they? Name names. So, so this, there's one gentleman who actually worked in the uh, uh, Trump staff, Bannon. I looked him up, and I found he was trained in uh, high school. He was Jesuit trained then. He then uh, went to a college that uh, was a Jesuit uh, connected college as well. And then he worked in foreign affairs, which is a telltale because when you look at foreign affairs, foreign affairs are what the Jesuits usually study in order to be able to go infiltrate countries. And so I, I seen the, the foreign affairs and I'm like, wow, this is crazy because what happens is when you have people fighting uh, as Jesuits, they usually fund both sides of a war. So when you look at Hitler, you'll find that the Vatican call Hitler a fallen son. So the Jesuits funded the war with Hitler and helped him to destroy the Jews, which makes sense because when you look at the Vatican Inquisition, the, the tens of millions of Christians that were killed for having 
the Bible text in their own language were actually people who were Christians. So the Jesuits being a militia for Rome first and then going after their own pursuits, it makes total sense that they will infiltrate and attack their own people because this is what they've done in history. And then they would have news media who are already Jesuit connected to fight against them partially without telling the truth and doctors and lawyers that are all Jesuit connected. John Podesta, Jesuit connected, right? You see these people doing these wrong things in history and then you find out, whoa, that was a Jesuit? So Podesta, Jesuit connected. Uh, Christopher Ray, Jesuit connected, right? When you look at the fact that the FBI doesn't have a charter and we got government officials who keep saying, why is the FBI breaking the law? But they don't come out and say, they don't have a charter. They yeah, people need to really look to... into that, by the way. And, and we're going to explain that. That's for a whole other show. But the FBI literally is just an appointed group of thugs that says, yeah, you're now federal law enforcement agents. And so literally they're running around without a charter, um, trumping up fake investigations and actually incarcerating people on fake bogus charges that they have no authority uh, to do, to, to use, to yes, do sir. that. Uh, but nobody yes, wants sir. to talk about that the same way that the media doesn't want to talk about Watch the Water and alternative media wants to blast it. Now, might I suggest a, a hypothesis here? I think that if Watch the Water would have been done by somebody in mainstream media, uh, which never would happen because of funding and because of the control and everybody else, but if somebody or and the lack of testicular fortitude, really, but if somebody had the balls and didn't mm -hmm. have a leash and they did exactly what I did on, say, I don't know, the Fox News channel and the guy's name was Tucker Carlson, um, everybody would have gone, whoa, this is unbelievable. So hold on a second now. The reason why people are moving to alternative media to begin with is because they are starting to recognize that places like Fox are on a leash, getting a huge amount of their budget from people like Pfizer, being funded by BlackRock and Vanguard, and then looking at the connections to the globalists that are funding Vanguard and BlackRock and own shares and stock and stake in these companies, and that they all happen to have the same agenda. So people are waking up to that, and so slowly... Alternative media is the truth source that most people are going to. Mm -hmm. So they come to a platform mm -hmm. like the Stu Peters show expecting me to always be digging for truth and finding answers and presenting evidence and vetting information for them to then research on their own. Why is this one different? Why is there such a fervent attack on this? And it's not even about the message itself because really – I didn't substantiate, make, or endorse any claims during Watch the Water. I asked some questions, and Dr. Artis brought, by the way, indisputable evidence, research papers, peer-reviewed journals, and these kinds of things that nobody can argue with. But the argument has even been stretched so far as to say that Watch the Water was anti-Semitic. That's, that's Jesuitism. So the Jesuits are very good with labeling people and making arguments that are divisive and to destroy those who are real. So the Jesuits fight battles from both sides of the fight. If I, if I read to you some of the things that are said by some of our forefathers, if you look at R.W. Thompson, he was an ex-secretary in the American Navy. He says the Jesuits are, the, are deadly enemies of civil and religious liberty, exactly what they're attacking when it comes to shots. COVID going outside. They're using it all together. Um, between 1551 and 1931, the Society of Jesus was expelled from at least 83 countries, city, states, and cities right. for engaging in political intrigue and subversion plots against the welfare of the state. Yes. According to records of a Jesuit uh, priest of repute, Thomas J. Campbell, Practically every instance of expulsion was for political entry, political infiltration, political subversion, and inciting to political insurrection. Now, notice this. When it comes to the gentleman who I found named Bannon, it was deep because he got kicked off of Twitter for saying uh, something about uh, political officials having their head cut off. Um, and Fauci and the other gentleman was, one was Fauci and there was another, and I can't remember who it was now, but he got kicked off of Twitter for that. So it was deep to me that he is one who, who they're looking at over January 6th, but he would say something that would seem like he's battling, but then at the same time, anybody who's connected with him when he says that, it can cause for them to be labeled. So it was kind of strange when I when I saw 
what he said. And then I saw uh, what the Jesuits have done in history. It was just unbelievable. And here's another one from John Adams. He says, my history of the Jesuits is not eloquently written, but is supported by unquestionable authorities, is very particular and very horrible. Their restoration is indeed a step toward darkness, cruelty, despotism, and death. I do not like the appearance of the Jesuits. If ever there was a body of man who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell, it is the society of Loyola. The guy who created was uh, Ignatius. Loyola. So we have in our history, people who are famous telling that this is a military order, that they're all about subversion, they're all about uh, lying and deceit and causing nations to collapse. So if you look at what's happening now in America, COVID is used as something to harm the people and at the same time make the nations collapse. Now, I'm going to show you something about the, the, the video you guys did that's really deep. If you go to Title 42 and you look at uh, CARES Act uh, proceeds, you're going to find that there's a federal program where the Fed is making money off the first and second diagnosis of every single person that's diagnosed with COVID. Yeah. And then they make more money for every person who gets put on a ventilator. This is why they cycled so up the PCR tests to promote more uh, false positives and uh, use this failed test. The whole pandemic was based on this failed test because they had to hit a quota yes, in order to get their funding. Yes, sir. So you think about this. When they first came out and said that, that people had COVID, I asked the question. I said, how do you test for COVID when COVID supposedly just got here and you don't have a standard to use to test to see if your test is accurate? Well, it's easy to just we, lie because there's no virus for COVID in the first place. Show me the virus. That's what I keep telling people. You want to argue with the watch the water theory? Then show me the virus. Uh, Dr. Urso, go. this Jesuit trained doctor that you're speaking of, or any of these other doctors. I'd be interested to know, by the way, in alternative medicine, anybody that's coming out against this, are they all Jesuits? Um, I mean, you're bringing up a lot of very valid points that seem to be really researched in history. And if we ignore our history, it's bound to repeat itself. I mean, history, it's, everything yes, here is cyclical. So what is the main objective here? Who are these people really? And what is their end goal? Well, the Jesuits like to use uh, different things as a, uh, a lever against your freedom. So what they'll do is uh, they'll cause an action. If you look at like the Hegelian dialectic, right, they'll cause an action. And then after they cause the action, they'll provide a solution to bring forth the desired result. So usually they'll come with two solutions that are exactly what they want. So what they'll say is if you want to get the, back to the new normal, everybody got to take a shot and a booster. Well, they know the shot and the booster will kill you. Which is what they right? want. Yeah. So if you look at the 62nd Congress of the United States, uh, they put it in the Library of Congress, which somebody ripped it out of the book. And uh, you can find it, though, online. You could go look on YouTube, the Jesuit Extreme Oath. And you're going to see where they say in their oath that they will act without conscience. They will uh, infiltrate any nation or church heretical, meaning anything that's not wrong, they will infiltrate. And then they say that they will wage relentless war secretly or openly. And don't they and have that, a, a history of relentless activity as well? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, let me tell you this. Just so your viewers can see, go look up Jesuits' $166 million lawsuit you'll find out that they settled a lawsuit between, I believe it was 1940 and 1990s for raping children repeatedly. Repeatedly Wait, raping children. how do you settle children. a civil lawsuit for that and not go to prison? Who's being held criminally responsible because, for this? Because the Jesuits are connected to law enforcement. So when you look at the history of the CIA and the FBI, you're going to find they've been Jesuit controlled the whole time. So when you want them to prosecute, they do exactly what they did with Hillary Clinton, who's married to Jesuit Bill Clinton. They start making deals or saying, we don't know what a crime is, right? Was it really a crime? Was there intent? Whatever. Can we go meet on the, the, uh, at the airport and just have a private discussion? Under the Constitution and under the law, you can't have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with somebody who you're supposed to be investigating in the private. You can't do that. But what they do is, is that they make agreements and they block the law and the truth from coming out. This is exactly so what the FBI has been doing with January 6th and flip, trying to flip yes, informants sir. and then leaking information. It's what Comey did. It's what 
uh, you Michigan. know, Page and Strzok did. Michigan with the uh, kidnapping plot on Whitmer. Gretchen Whitmer. Uh -huh. Turns out that this uh -huh. was concocted by FBI agents who brought a couple of autistic stooges along for the ride. Uh, yes. I mean, there's so many different things that we can look at. The FBI is completely corrupt to the core. Well, they never had a charter. So they're not corrupted because they started corrupt. Right. They started wrong. There is nothing in the legislature of the United States history saying that we create an entity called the FBI that has private inquisitorial powers that can go out and arrest people and set people up. It doesn't exist, which is a conversation for a whole other day. And we're out of time, so we'll have to have it on another day. Uh, a biblical scholar and a constitutional scholar, David Jose, we always appreciate you coming by. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. More of the Stu Peter sir. Show continues in just 60 seconds. It's Holy Week. Easter coming up this Sunday. Go nowhere. <laughs>